Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, everybody. This is Jason Weiss. Uh, I am here after uh, an extra week off on the Going Solo Network, the Ask Jason Weiss Show. Uh, I am your host, Jason Weiss. Uh, I am also um, a, a, a what I am calling myself now as a legal consultant, uh, and I am helping others uh, find their way, find their passion, and and learn. Uh, so I am Jason Weiss. Nothing in here today is considered legal advice. Um, and should you need legal advice, consult an attorney. <clears throat> Nothing I am saying here is legal advice. So I'm going to get right into it. Uh, I do have a guest who is going to be hopefully joining us any minute now from the Bahamas. Uh, but as part of the practice of law, it is you got to go with the flow. Um, and, and hopefully some of you can see that Steph John uh, just joined us. Um, and I'm not sure if he can hear us or, or not. Uh, Steph, can you hear me speaking? I guess he can't hear me speaking, um, but he uh, he's not hearing me um, and only bits and pieces of it. Uh, so I'm not sure what we're going to do. Uh, he might just look pretty for us for the show for a minute or two and we'll bump him out. Um, and, and I'll go in again. Practice of law. It, 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 it go with the flow and hey, do what you got to yep. do. Can you guys hear me now? We hear you, Steph. It seems as if I could, you guys could hear me, but I, I'm not um, hearing you clearly. I'm only hearing as if you guys are turning on like a microphone and then turning it back off. Well, we hear you and we're live. So, um, so Steph, tell us a little bit about um, yourself. John, uh, I, I am a recent associate with, uh, with with Jason. I graduated law school from uh, from the University of Miami. Uh, it seems as if it was long ago, but it's not too long ago. I graduated uh, two three years ago, and um, 20, 20, two, 2019, I graduated law school, and I've been practicing law for just about three years. And um, so far, so good. No regrets. Um, I'm originally from Trinidad. I moved to I moved to to the states for for undergrad. I, I first went to undergrad at um, St. John Fisher in Rochester, New York. It's very cold. Um, and then I, I moved down south to, to to the warmer weather. And I've been in, I've been in Florida ever since. Uh, I, I spent some time in Bradenton, um, where I worked at the uh, IMG Sports Academy. I was most involved in soccer over there, and then um, yeah, and then I started my my law my law school career, and eventually ended up um, working for for, for Jason. Um, and the type of law that I do right now is I've done a, a, a hybrid in a good way. I've done some business transaction. I've, I've done business litigation. Sorry, I've done transactional. Um, and especially now with Jason, I'm, I'm doing a lot more in the TCPA world, um, Telecommunication Protection Act. Um, uh, I also do a little bit of intellectual property, more specifically trademarks. Um, let's see. I've, yes, I would say mostly transactional um, business litigation in terms of my areas of law. So you mentioned so just just to touch on the TCPA, um, TCPA, like I said, is a, it's a it's a it's a telecommunications uh, protection act, and it, it's really in place to to, to protect consumers uh, from from sort of getting um, cold called, right? Um, a lot of times you you may you may have been in a position where you've gotten a call from uh, from a company that's um, talking about your expired car warranty, right? And um, the, 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 telefo the telephone, the telephone consumer protection act has been put in place, and is in place of uh, 
1991. And really, its main purpose is to protect the consumers from, um, like I said, the, the cold calling, the, the, the excessive calling, and sort of uh, invasion into your into your your personal your personal life, right? Your, your, your cell phone, your your residential phone, and the, like I said, the TCPA was put in place to protect to protect the consumers and to sort of make it an even playing field, so to speak, right? You, you sort of not allowing one one company to to get too much of your attention and, and sort of bombarding you with 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 calls and sales pitches. Um, without your consent, right? A big part of the TCPA is, um, is consent. And um, with Jason's firm, Jason's been, been doing the TCPA work for, for a long time and I'm fairly new to it, but it's, a, it's an interesting area of law. And it's, uh, I think it's... it's Wow, well, we're having it's, a... It's, it's beneficial I... to you because it's also... A t- So I, I think Steph is breaking up a little bit. So I'm going to get into um, the the abuse of uh, the TCPA. Um, so the TCPA um, oh. is uh, the TCPA is basically um, it, it puts you in there so that you don't get the excessive calls. Um, and, and again. The, the law is, depending on who you ask, uh, as a defense attorney, I'm going to have a different opinion than a plaintiff's attorney. But as a defense attorney, what I'm going to tell you about with the TCPA is, you know, you get one phone call and you ask to not be called again. The company did what they were supposed to do. Um, if you get 20 phone calls and you've asked 20 times in order to stop, then something is going on. Now, there are a lot of abuses in this area of the law. There is the bait and switch. There is the opportunity to go ahead and, you know, I've heard it before where, oh, I don't want to talk about a warranty right now. My, my spouse makes all the decisions. Um, go ahead and uh, call my spouse and here's his or her number. And they call that person on the phone and they say, great, you're, you know, your husband told us to give you a call. And next thing you know, boom. You're getting hit with with a lawsuit for the TCPA. Um, so so that's one of the abuses. So there's got to be a balance between the abuse of the TCPA and the protection of the person who is, uh, you know, receiving these phone calls. And there is a fine line. And there um, there are a lot of people that uh, do it. Um, and there's a lot of people that basically abuse it. Um, and there's, again, you got to walk that fine line. Um, so again, we are having a little bit of technical difficulties with, with Steph. He's down in the Bahamas. I guess one of the things that I can say is, um, one of the benefits he gets from practicing law is that he can go ahead and he can do it from the Bahamas. He can do it from New York. He can do it from wherever he is physically. Now, again, he's only licensed in Florida, so he's only practicing Florida law. But he can be physically almost anywhere he wants. And it's funny because this is something that I never had in my career until I went out on my own. When I worked for law firms, when I worked for everything, um, I... Um, I went ahead and I needed to basically sit, um, at my desk all the time. Um, and, and I was in the office six days a week, minimum every Saturday I was in. Um, and then I went ahead and, um, I went ahead and started to, uh, you know, post COVID not go in as much, started working out of the house more often. And now I sit in my house and I work, um, you know, five days a week. And I only go in one day a week. I'm still working the six days. Heck, you can ask my wife. I'm probably working seven days a week. Um, but, um, you know, it's it's the, the type of thing that, you know, it, it's going with the flow. And, and again, the perfect example is this show today. You know, I got Steph sitting there. Um, 
looking great, um, enjoying some some free time for himself. He's a guest on the show today, um, and, and I'm just trying to wing it with him. Uh, and we're going to do that. And that's why it's called the practice of law. You practice it and you get it right. You constantly strive for the best, best, best that you can do. Um, and, you know, that is, that is what we do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask uh, Steph a question and, and and let's see if, if he can answer it. Um, and if we have technical problems, I'll make up my own answer. It's okay. It'll be like, you know, going ahead and, uh, you know, uh, you know, it'll be like going ahead and, and, and getting thrown a curveball um, by a judge. Um, so I'm going to ask Steph um, why he went to law school to begin with. Um, so Steph, if you can hear me, um, you know, why, why did you, why did you go to, to law school? Why did you go to school? So, so I, I decided to go to law school. Um, well, I'd say I started when I first decided to go to law school. I was working at IMG. The the reason I, I decided to go to law school was, um, I guess, two reasons. The main reason was I had. Um, a heavy interest in sports. Um, I, I spent a lot of my time um, playing sports, spent a lot of my time watching sports, and I was really interested in in sports and how the sports and law sectors um, combine and what could be done within sports and law. Um, and IMG, like I, like I said, that's where I interned um, before, before law school. IMG is a, it's a, it's an international boarding school First originated with tennis, um, Nick Bolotin, behind IMG Academy. And um, so, like I said, it's an international boarding school. The sports include uh, golf, tennis, soccer, basketball. They just recently um, implemented uh, volleyball. They're also going to start gaming. There's baseball. There's, there's lacrosse. So there are a variety of sports and a variety of um, athletes, student athletes, of all different ages and from a lot of different backgrounds. Um, while I was there, I was I was involved in the soccer department, soccer operations, and eventually ended up coaching soccer. And I landed my job at IMG. Funny story, um, originally while I was in undergrad, I was offered an internship at IMG. And it, this was of uh, roughly about uh, 10, 10 years ago. And it was at the, around the time where there was a lot of um, debate and uh, unanswered questions regarding the, the use of interns and uh, on being unpaid. So I was, like I said, I was offered the position at IMG and about a month into, a, a month into, a month before I was supposed to start, I got a call from my supposed to be boss, my soon to be boss, um, saying that they're discontinuing the internship program um, and sort of good luck and um, sorry for the inconvenience. So what I did, I didn't, I didn't take that as a as a as a um, a slap in the face. I didn't take that as a a, a demotivator. I what I did was I kept in contact with, with Matt. Um, he he would have been my boss at the time. Um, I kept in contact with him, and eventually, once that semester finished. Um, there was an, a full-time position that opened up for which would have been for the internship but now like i said there were issues be, concerning unpaid interns so what they did is they, they made that internship into a full-time position and i applied I, I applied through the normal the normal channels and interviewed i had a good good um meeting with with matt when i went up to img and i eventually got the job so it was really how i landed the job um staying staying dedicated um staying keep keeping my keeping my my goal and my focus um keeping my eye on the target right i i didn't really 
I didn't really take any shortcuts. You know, I, I could have I could have just turned an eye to, to IMG when I was first um, when they first rescinded the offer. But um, but I was determined to be in sports. I was determined to 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 to, to challenge myself. And I just like I said, I kept in contact with Matt and I applied through the normal channels. And eventually, I I, I, inter I, I interviewed and I got the position. And I was there for two and a half years. And um, I have no regrets. I've made a lot of good connections, strong connections at IMG that I still maintain to, to this day. And uh, yeah, it, it's it's taught me a lot and I continue to learn um, through through my day-to-day day, day -day interactions with not only Jason, but um, clients and um, just, just associates, colleagues. So we're almost to the point and I'll talk for a minute or two uh, that we're gonna go to our commercial break um, because we have just wonderful sponsors who help us out and to do all that kind of stuff. Uh, and when we get back, uh, one of the questions that I'm going to pose to Steph has to do with uh, as a parent, and I, this is me as a parent, uh, what should you do for your son or daughter that wants to go on and play in college? What, what else is, is uh, you know, what could you do from both the IMG internal working standpoint to uh, being an athlete and and to to being a lawyer. Um, so again, uh, you know we we are we're rolling with the punches on these technical difficulties and and I'm sure Steph is will be when he's not traveling he will be able to come back on again. Um, but for now, we'll, what we'll do is we'll go into a commercial break and I'm going to go ahead and preload a couple of questions uh, for Steph. Uh, and, and we'll get into there. So uh, please, let, let's roll into our commercials, thank our wonderful sponsors, and, and, we'll, and we'll go from there. So we are back. Thank you for our sponsors, our great commercials. I actually love the music that plays for, for some of that. And we have Steph John, who is sitting with us 
right now, whose motto is let's build bridges and not walls. He is sitting in the Bahamas enjoying himself. A little bit of uh, work and pleasure all rolled into one. Um, one thing that um, that me as a as a teacher, as a as a mentor, as somebody who's looking to work with incredible people like Steph um, is that I phrase it differently. As I just said it, I like to work with incredible people like Steph. Steph is is still in the more traditional mold where he says he works for or he works. I don't I don't play that game. For me, it yes, my name happens to be on the firm. Yes, I do make the decisions at the end of the day, and I do get to deal with those types of things. But at the end, it's a team effort. It, it is a hundred percent, and I look at it as that he and I work together. Uh, everybody, we all work together from, you know, the the person that handles the bills to the ha- person that handles the books to my dad who was doing our computer scanning. I mean, he came in. He's part of the team. He doesn't work for me. He works with me. And that's one of the things that I, I'm, I'm trying to teach Steph. He's a phenomenal attorney, knows the law, really smart, works his tush off. Uh, and he probably and he can't hear any of this. So he's just sitting there pretty. He doesn't know we're talking about him right now. But the truth of the matter is the little things that I plan on teaching and hopefully we can pass down from generation to generation. That's my goal. That's what I am into this coaching, consulting and doing. Uh, and, and I want to just be uh, the eternal mentor. I want to teach. I want the time. And, and I love it. Um, so one of the things I'm going to ask Steph right now, getting back into his days of IMG, is what kind of advice would he give parents of high school students that want to go on to college and play a sport? Uh, and he'll probably interrupt me. So here he goes. He's muted. He's muted. Uh, we can't hear him. Um, so he's he's he said it all. Um, so I'm going to tell him to please go ahead. Question is, um, what advice would I give to to, high, to parents of high school students who want to play uh, college, who want to go to go on to college and, and play sports? Probably the most important piece of advice is um, let the let let your kid play. And what I mean by that is allow them to 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 to, to experience losing, ex- allow them to experience winning, um, in and and look on, look on from the sideline, and don't necessarily try to be um, another coach, right? I see I see a lot of um, parents on the sideline trying to coach and trying to do too much. Because um, my first year of law school, I coached uh, soccer. I coached U12 girls, and I also coached U6, uh, U19 girls. And a big issue that I saw was parents trying to, to be the coach as well, right? So when I say let the kids play, it's it's important for the kids to take to, to experience losing, experience winning, experience um, getting into an altercation with another player, getting into arguments, and it, it builds not only character but it builds the sort of um, sport IQ because you're not always going to be coached per se, right? You're going to have a coach, but at some point, you, uh, the, the the player, the the, the student is going to be on the field and um, they're going to have to sort of maneuver maneuver on their own, right? So my advice is allow your kids to play, allow them to have fun, but still maintain within them the, the end goal, right? It's always important to, to stay focused on your end goal and, and know where you want to be. But between getting to your end goal and where you're at, it's always important to, to have fun. So my advice, allow the kids to have fun, make sure they stay focused on the end goal, and just be, do do less coaching and just more supportive, and, and it really goes a long way. So that's my advice. Grades can't you can't you can't can't negotiate with that, right? Um, your grades have to be up. Your grades have to be good because I mean, by definition, student athlete, right? Student comes first, athlete comes second. So it, it's crucial. It's imperative that 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 they remain focused on 
on their their studies, their their, their grades. You know, a big part of my upbringing was um, no sport unless my grades are in line, right? I mean, at some t- some points, I sort of uh, I didn't like that. I didn't like that um, that that rule, and I, I would get into a lot of um, arguments with my with my dad. But at the end of the day, I think it really it served it it served its purpose um, because you could get injured in a split second and you, you have nothing to fall back on, right? I know that's always the, 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 the thing that parents say. What, if, what happens if you, you get injured? You, 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 don't have to, you, you need your grades. So grades, are, there's no debate, there's no negotiation with, uh, with grades. I think it's, like I said, it's, it's imperative that, that you remain focused and you remain um, level-headed and focus on your school. But at the same time, be able to, to have fun and play, right? Best class in law school to teach to teach you, me about law. To teach me about law. That's that's a very that's a that's a tough one. But best class in law school to teach me about law. I would say it would have to be uh, civil procedure, right? Um, f- uh, federal civil procedure taught me about law. And that's what the day to day day about law. I don't think there was a class that really taught me the day to day about law. I think you learn more about the day to day of law practicing law. Right. Um, I wish I had a class that taught me the day to day about law, but I guess that's why I have Jason now. Um, but it, it's civil procedure taught me about law in general, but the day to day, I mean, you really, you really, I was never really taught day to day of law in law school. Right. It's really through internships, through, through my, through my clerkships um, and just experience that that's really how I learned about day to day in law. And what was the most shocking thing when you got into the, the real world of law? The shocking, the most shocking thing of when, when I got into the real world of law is how little they teach you in law school about the real world of law. Very simple. And, and do, you, do you think, would you make a recommendation um, that they taught you, um, that they taught something like that uh, in law school? Law school, yes. I recommend law school 100% if you're committed to, to the end goal, right? If you want to be an attorney, if you, want to, if you want to practice law, if you're really invested in law, yes, I 100% recommend law school. But it's, it's, it's not just enough to, to say, okay, I'm going to law school. You really need to apply yourself, read, um, and, and really immerse yourself in, 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 the, in, in, in the law. Right. Um, so I think, yes, I would recommend law school if you're you're really committed and you're really in- invested in it. But what are you currently reading with law and what are you currently reading for personal? What am I currently reading for law? Um, I read a lot of uh, the one, the TCP, the TCP articles, um, a lot of. Uh, TCPA world articles and intellectual property articles, um, and really, if I if I come across if I come across an issue that I've never heard of or, or a case, I mean, I, it's it's nothing for me to to Google it and just 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 sort of do my own personal research on it, right? I'm always I'm not really subscribed to one specific um, um, platform. I, I just sort of whatever whatever issue or. or or element or cause of action or topic that I'm not too familiar with. I, I just try to do my own research on, on, on my own and, and just really just just read up on it. We're working this summer with a, a first year law school student uh, and he'll he'll be on at some point uh, during uh, the summer and we'll have him on and we'll ask him some questions. But what would you tell a 1L to do this summer in order to get most out of a 1L summer? 
you know, what what would you what would you tell? And a one L is a first year law school. Student. My advice to one L this summer: get involved, get involved, and 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 get get your hands dirty. Right, um, get an internship during the summer. If, if it's whether it's a uh, in house, whether it's in, in a law firm, it, I can't stress the importance of um, getting experience. Right, getting into a law firm, you're gonna you're not gonna know everything. You're gonna feel shy, but it's important to, to get in there and just sort of get used to it. And um, that's that's really my advice. Put yourself put yourself out there, um, market yourself, and um, create resources. Create a create a rolodex of individuals that you could not only reach out to but you could learn from. And the earlier you do it, the the, the better it is. So oh, kind of like a, a mentor. Uh, so I guess the question would be, what about a mentor? What would you look for? Me, for me, in a mentor, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for someone that's patient. Um, I'm looking for someone that, that's invested in in the law. And not, not just in the law, but shares some of my um, same goals, right? <laughs> um, for example, Jason. Jason is... Um, he's a great mentor and, and for, for, for numerous reasons. One being uh, he's invested in the law. He, he's in also he's patient. He, he's invested in, in teaching. He wants to teach. He wants to help you get to that next level. And um, he, he's, he's seasoned, right? He, he, he's been there. He's, he's taught sports law. He, he's been in that environment. And that's what I look for in a mentor, someone who has experience, someone who's, who's willing to, to learn with you, someone who's willing to teach you, and someone who's, um, who's really there to not necessarily hold your hand, but to, to prepare you before you go into battle. And, and it's really about being confident and really having someone next to you that, that sort of um, allows you to feel that, that level of confidence in, in, in law. So... And and one of the things that um, um, that is is uh, that I want to touch is that while Steph says that it's great that I'm invested, it's also awesome to see someone else that is invested, uh, someone that I want to go into battle with, someone that I know that maybe Steph he's only three or four years out of school and he might not know all of the law and he might not know everything, but it's someone there who will take the time to will do the research, who will do the work. Um, it is just a constant, uh, you know, trying his best, doing his best, putting forth the effort. And you can't teach that in law school. You can teach in law school uh, how to write a contract, how to review something, how to do research. That's all teachable. What's not teachable is the drive, the motivation, the passion, um, and, and all of those things. And, you know, it's, it's important and, and you can't teach that you either have it or, or, or you don't have it. Uh, and I'm not sure if speaking of having it or don't having it, if we still have, um, Steph here. Um, and if, if we do awesome, I'm going to bring him back and I'll pose another question. And if not, I'm going to just keep talking and babbling on and on, uh, on my own. Um, so it is Steph, if, if, uh, if you're here, let me know. Um, if you're not, um, you know, also, uh, so nope, Steph is, uh, has jumped off. Um, oh, nope. Steph is, is down. Back. Um, and, and again, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm going to try to ask him uh, a question or two, uh, about, uh, maybe a law show. Um, so, so, Steph, do you uh, watch any law shows on um, on TV or um, or Netflix? So that that that's going to be uh, the the question I have. Do you watch any law shows on TV or Netflix? And if so, what is it? I do. I, 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 I try to. Um, law shows, I would say more more crime shows. Um, I'm, I'm currently watching one on um, HBO Max right now called uh, We Own the City, right? Um, but I, I, I tend to see, well, it's it's more exciting when you when you're dealing with um, with criminal with criminal law in terms of Netflix um, shows or, or HBO shows, right? Hardly likely are you, are you going to come across a, a really 
excited show where they where they're talking about um, TCPA world or, or um, reviewing a contract, right? But in terms of law shows, I, I watch a lot of um, crime docu- docu- documentaries and so forth. Have you seen the Lincoln Lawyer? Lincoln Lawyer, one of my favorites. Um, the movie, and there's actually the, there's a new show on Netflix, um, The Lincoln Lawyer. Um, Pelican Brief is a great one. Um, the new, the new there, show. there are a lot of good shows. Um, My Cousin Vinny, you can't forget that. That's a classic. The, the new show of the Lincoln yeah, Lawyer. I, the new the new Lincoln Lawyer is on my list on my on my to watch list. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna ask Steph one more question uh, about if he was in law school and had a chance to do anything again, would he do anything different? And then um, I will go ahead uh, and. Um, you know, wrap it up and, and, and we'll go from there. And again, the, the practice of law is just the, go with the flow, go with the punches. Today, we're, we're, we're doing the best we can with some difficulties. Um, and, you know, I'm just babbling on and on to try to fill time. Now I'm totally kidding. But this wasn't planned. And, and you go with the flow. And what are you going to do? Get upset, crawl in a corner, put stick my tail between my legs? No, I'm not going to do that. We're going to go with the flow. Um, and if, I'm going to ask Steph if you had one thing in law school to do again, what would you do different? And let's see what he says. If I had one thing to do in law school that I'll do different would be take more Florida specific law classes. For example, Florida Civil Procedure, Florida Criminal Criminal Procedure. Um, but yeah, Florida topics. It's I can't stress the importance of really knowing, like as if on like the back of your hand, knowing civil procedure for, for your specific state. And for me, my biggest regret was not taking more Florida specific classes because from the minute you start interning, those are the, those are the skills that I, that I really want to to know, make sure that you know, right? And that that's that's you you could get caught up real quickly on missing a deadline, right? I mean, some of the basic things, knowing how how, how many days there is to, to 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 respond to a complaint or to respond to a motion. I mean, you really overlook those things. Well, at least I did during my time in law school. Um, so that would that would be one thing I'll do different. Really focus in and paying more attention to the Florida specific rules. And um, and laws. All right, so I think we're going to wrap up with Steph in a minute. Um, and Steph, how can people reach you? All right, I just want to say thank uh, thank Jason for 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 having me on this show today. Um, thank everyone for hosting me today. And I'm gonna put my email and my phone number um, in, in, into the box and feel free to reach out with any questions. And um, I'll be back soon to answer any questions. And we're gonna talk more about sports and athletes in schools. So once again, thank you for having me. And it was a pleasure speaking here today. And like I said, I'm gonna put my information in there. Phone number is 954-573-2800. And my email address is stefan at jswlawyer.com. Yep. So there we go. Stefan at jswlawyer.com. Phone number 954-573-2800. Thank you, everyone. And I just want to thank Steph. Um, And I know he can't hear me, but look, we, we rolled with the punches. We did it. We got through a show where Steph couldn't hear us speaking at all. And we got to hear him and we got to hear background and I am going to go ahead and I'm going to dig at him forever and ever and ever on it. And it's going to be like, do you remember that time that you were in the Bahamas? Well, I'm going to have fun with it. But again, that is what the practice of law is about. It's not a rigid black, white, gray. It's not. That's it. Yes. The law is you have black, you have white, you have law. I get it. hundred percent. But as a practitioner, We got to go with the flow. We got to roll with the punches and we have to do what we have to do. And tons of times we'll, we'll do what's called hurry up and wait. Got to get it done. Got to get it done. Got to get it done. Get it to the client. 
and then crickets. And then a judge mandates something and you do it and crickets. So it's, it's all go with the flow. It's all do the best you can. It's all just be the best person that you could be while practicing law at all times. If you have any questions, I am here for you. You can get me at askjasonweiss.com. You could check me out at jswlawyer.com. You could email me at jason at jswlawyer.com, or you can call me at 954-573-2800. I look forward to seeing you all again next week. We're going to do this again next Thursday, and uh, I'm going to bring on uh, another guest. And although I've been asked, bring Dr. Bogart back, having to do with uh, the, the safety with, with, with guns. I'm going to, I promise, but we're going to wait a couple of weeks to bring him back. And I'm also going to bring in someone who's in law school and learning right now. So that in case any law school students want to listen, they can next week. I'm going to try to do something a little bit different. Fingers crossed. I can get who I want. And if not, I'll get someone else who I want. Thank you all. CC, you're awesome. Thank you so much for doing this. We, 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 we did it today. We rolled with the punches and uh, and you rock and and thank you everyone and, and thank you goingsocialmedia.com um, you are the best have a great day everyone.